Hey everybody, Will Morton from the Jumpstart Project. We have another video that's gonna jumpstart your faith. We're doing a series of videos on prophecy, hearing the voice of God, and seeing in the Spirit. Now I know for some in the body of Christ, this is a very scary uh, topic, and for some it's even uh, taboo, but to be honest, it shouldn't be. Prophecy is found throughout the Bible. So prophecy is one of the gifts that I really, really love. And um, when I started uh, to move in this gifting, the Lord said to me, learning to prophecy, learning to hear my voice, learning to see in the spirit is like learning a language. And we know as believers in Christ that we have been adopted into God's family. So we should know how our heavenly father speaks. We should be able to hear the voice of Jesus. Jesus himself said, my sheep hear my voice. And we should be able to follow the leadings and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Being able to hear the Lord's voice is just part of the relationship with God. I mean, if I couldn't hear my wife's uh, voice, if we didn't talk, if there was no communication, um, it wouldn't be a very good relationship and it really uh, wouldn't be a good marriage, right? So the Lord said to me, prophecy is prayer with a purpose. When we're praying over somebody, we're listening for what the Lord has to say. And then we're delivering those words of faith, of hope, of love, of encouragement, even speaking words of life, uh, healing and restoration. It's for the edification of the body. It's for building up the believer. Um, and it may be a directional word. Uh, if somebody is stuck and they don't know what to do, giving them a word of knowledge may set them on the right path so they can follow uh, the Lord wholeheartedly once again. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to be like the children of Israel in Exodus 18, where God came down. And yes, it was probably a really scary thing. And God wanted to speak to his people. He wanted to have a relationship. He wanted to restore what was lost in the garden. And, um, and the people freaked out. They were like, yeah, we don't want to hear it. They said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us. Every time I read that passage, it, uh, <laughs> I just, it makes me so sad. Why would you not want to have a relationship with the living God? Jesus, who loves you so much, who laid his life down for you, who gave us the Holy Spirit as a teacher, as a comforter, and is drawing us to himself so we could be united in eternity. Bottom line, God wants relationship with us. Jesus, through the cross, is reconciling all of creation uh, to God. And he said, my sheep hear my voice. So if you're interested in prophecy, here we go. So for a moment, let's use uh, the term prophecy and prayer interchangeably because uh, uh, we always think about prophecy as speaking out. Um, the Lord said to me, prophecy is prayer with a purpose. So if prophecy is actually prayer, we know about um, praying, you know, where we talk to God, we give, a, uh, we give him our long list of things uh, that we need or we want to do, and we make our requests known. But there's a second side to that, which a lot of people do not practice, and that's contemplative prayer, where we sit in quiet and we wait on God, and we quiet our spirit, and we let everything go out of our mind, and we wait and listen to what God has to say. Now, many in the body of Christ, uh, saints and believers alike, many of the desert fathers practice this type of contemplative prayer. So there's the one where we're in the living room and we have the remote and, uh, you know, everything that pops up. Oh, God, I want that. Oh, God, would you bless me? Oh, God, hey, uh, I need this. Oh, God, come through for me. Oh, I'm really in a pickle now. God, save me. <laughs> We've all been there. I've done it. And I just want to point out, contemplative prayer totally makes sense. I mean, if you're in a relationship and all you do is talk, 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 but you never stop to listen, how are you going to glean anything? How are you going to learn? How are you going to know? 
But there's another place where we just sit and rest in his presence. And we wait to listen to what God has to say. And in that place of waiting, he refreshes us and he gives us what we need. I really like Psalm 68, 19, which says, Blessed be the Lord, the God who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation. You know, I was chewing on that scripture for weeks and weeks and weeks, and I was asking the Lord, what does that mean? And I heard the Lord say, there are things that I lay aside for you every day. We know his love and mercies are new every morning. There's a provision of wisdom for any situation. There's grace, there's favor. Uh, and God will line up your day um, if, you, if you let him. And the Lord said to me concerning that, he said, those provisions are set aside. They're promises in my word. And you access them by faith. You access them by believing. And you access by thanking me. God, thank you for favor as I walk into this interview. God, thank you for financial provision. God, thank you for filling my heart with wisdom and understanding and helping me answer the question so that I get this job. God, thank you. As we express our thanks and gratitude for the things that God already says we have, they start to manifest in our life. So when I went to Bible school, the Holy Spirit came to me in a dream and he said, I want you to take classes on prophecy and evangelism. And uh, he told me that because that's part of my gifting. He also told me that learning to prophesy is like learning a language. Now, if you have little kids, you know they learn a little at a time and it's through repetition. And the Lord himself says that he teaches us line by line, precept by precept, here a little, there a little. And just as we would teach our kids to speak in the natural, you know, we'd start out with characters, B, A, we'd associate it with something like an apple. You know, there's uppercase and lowercase. And uh, we start to identify uh, different things and then we'd build the concept. And that's kind of how the Lord has taught me to see in the spirit. Through, through practice, through spending time with him, um, my understanding of what God is saying uh, has grown substantially over the years. And I wanna put your mind at ease. This is what the Lord showed me when, when I first started um, prophesying over people, but then also he would tell me, go to Safeway right now, you'll find somebody uh, standing next to the, uh, the uh, strawberries, and uh, this is what I want you to tell him. Or he'd tell me, hey, I want you to go to a gas station uh, at the time, 1111, you're going to find a guy on a bicycle in a red hoodie. What the Lord showed me in a uh, vision was Father God sitting in the middle of the room and I found myself looking like a toddler. And I was leaning against the couch and I was trying to pull myself up and I would fall down, but I had a diaper on. (laughs) I know it's a weird picture, right? But this is what God showed me. And uh, you know, God's never concerned uh, uh, about us falling down. You know, in the vision, he reached over He picked me up, he stood me back up, and he said, okay, come on, come on, keep going, keep practicing, you know, in the most loving way, in the most loving term. And Jesus came to me in a dream and said, every action and word delivered must be done in love. So we're going to set some ground rules right off the bat. When you're learning to prophesy, the best way to do it is in a safe space. If you have a prayer team at church, if there's an opportunity for you to pray for people before or after the service, you could do it in your youth group. Um, Or if you have a prophecy and prayer team, um, great place for you to prophesy. Now, we don't prophesy big words. We don't prophesy anybody's getting married. We don't prophesy babies. We don't prophesy, hey, you're going to Africa. Nope, not when you're learning. We stick to some basics, you know? We speak words of faith and hope and love. We speak words of encouragement because this is for the edification of the the, uh, body.
we're, we're sticking to speaking words of life. So when I'm trying to get a word for somebody, I simply uh, pray and say, hey God, you love this person and you wanna bless them. So would you let me see the treasure that's in their heart? Would you let me see who you created them to be? Not how they're known here, but how are they known in heaven? God, let me speak words of wisdom and words of life. You know, I never worry about correction and I never worry about sin. If I see something on somebody, I just ignore it because my job is to speak words of life. And in doing so, then I'm open. I'm open to any thoughts, to any feelings, impressions. If I get a hint of something, I may ask, hey, um, does this mean anything to you? But I always ask the Lord for words that are gonna build them up, words of encouragement. And along with pictures, I ask God to give me scripture. So then I know that I'm on the right track. If, if God gives me uh, a picture of something, but a scripture comes along with it, if I have the interpretation, uh, then I know I'm standing on solid ground and I can deliver that word with confidence. So hey, this is just part one on our series on prophecy, hearing the voice of God and seeing in the spirit. I hope you stay tuned uh, for the rest of this uh, series, but thanks for tuning in. Take care, uh, goodbye, and God bless.